know, when I decided to step off the television wheel and become a full-time entrepreneur, not even having taken stock of my values, I was already thinking about how I could go see the world and how could I make work a part of that so that I could justify seeing the world. And now I've been all around the world several times. I run a women's leadership platform and so much of it is driven by the element of adventure. However, when I do land on the ground, I want to make sure that I'm well rested. I smell good. And I also want to be super organized. So as a result of that, I've made this video today of all of the gadgets and things that I am packing for before the flight, during the flight, and when I first arrive. Okay, so before the flight, I pack everything into packing cubes, and I'm even going to advance that thought one step further. I buy a whole mess of them, especially if I'm going to be on successive trips and I have the benefit of being able to plan ahead. I pack by the outfit, and the way my, my litmus test is is that I look at the temperature of the destination. I think about the activities that I'm going to be doing at that destination, and I think about the fashion at that destination. And I pack outfits mapping to each activity based on all those metrics, and I pack them into those individual packing cubes. Now, I'm currently fangirling over the Away luggage set of four. It comes in varying sizes. But let's say, for example, you're going to be on several trips. I am too this year. And some of these items overlap. Pants are going to be worn in Paris, and they're also going to be worn in Turkey. Well, you can put a post-it note on the bag reminding you of the item that is missing from that away packing cube. I know that I started doing this because one time, one time I forgot a strapless bra under a gown, and I never made that mistake again. Trello boards. Uh, Trello is a project management app. I have bastardized it and used it for my travel planning tips. I keep a running list there of everything that's going to come with me on a trip. And I also copy the list over for every single trip because there are things that are always going to be coming with me on all of my travels. So I keep a running list. I copy it over and then put a new header on it for the trip that I'm about to go on. Let's talk toiletry bags. I have the benefit of a mom who works at the beauty counter at the department store, which means that she has access to a ton of those little makeup bags with skincare product samples in them. I used to pack everything in those bags because I have so many of them, but then I found myself rummaging through the bags to look for a pair of scissors. So today I have traded in those cloth bags, sorry mom, for these Truffle Clarity Jet Set cases. They come in multiple sizes, mini standard and jumbo. I like the standard size mainly because they zip open from the top. You can see that they're transparent, but there's no rummaging and the leather cleans up, wipes up a lot easier than any cloth bag does, especially if my product decides to explode mid-flight. Air tags. I got one of these at Christmas. I tucked it into the zipper compartment in my away luggage bag, and it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, on your iPhone, if you're an iPhone user, is the Find My Network app. And on that app, it allows your iPhone to track your AirTag and by default, your suitcase so it doesn't get lost in the airport ecosystem. AirTags are a blessing and Apple makes them. Backpacks. I used to have a smart backpack from Coach. I love the look of it. It was very smart, but the leather was just too darn heavy. Note to Coach. So today I'm all about light, light, light. I need this thing to be as light as possible because I'm going to add weight with all the things I'm going to stuff inside the backpack. Danye Dover makes this ultra light, puffy backpack made from 29 recycled plastic bottles. It's got a compartment for my laptop, which I'm super protective of, but it's also got a separate compartment for my water bottle because I'm always worried about the two of them co-mingling and then all of a sudden I don't have a functioning laptop. Kindle, pens, wallet, it's got compartments for everything, so it effect becomes my traveling office. Okay, let's talk about power banks because I take a lot of videos and photos. I mean a lot for my Insta stories. And for me, it, it's a personal thing from my documentary production days. I love documenting the journey and then watching the clips all stitched together. I love going back in time and looking at memories of where I was on a certain day. All that to say is that I'm burning through a lot of battery power on my phone. So I carry this PowerCore portable charger from Anchor. Um, this is available on Amazon. I'll tell you, I carry this around New York City and I definitely, definitely make sure that I carry it around with me on my travels because 
what's worse than having to pull up to an internet cafe to charge your phone? I can't imagine that there's anything worse than that when you're, you've come thousands of miles to see a destination. When I took my first trip, my very first trip in high school, um, I remember having this little collection in a bag of adapters for every single country because we were going to Spain, France, and England. All right, this travel adapter that I'm showing you now from a brand called Apica is universal. It can be used in every country. You only need to carry this one thing. And the beautiful thing about this tra travel plug adapter is that all of the extensions, if you will, actually pop out of the square. So it's not like you've got things that are going to catch on your clothes if you're packing those adapters in with all of your suitcase materials. Extension cord. This is just me, but I love to carry this anchor extension cord because sometimes just sometimes the mirror is ill-placed in the hotel room or on a boat. It's too far from the mirror. So I always bring this extension cord along to bridge any gaps and plug all of my things in. It's got USB ports on one side. It's got plug points on the other side. So it's got a lot of different outlets for you to be able to operate and charge all of your devices. I'm going to be in Paris for six, uh, sorry, four weeks this summer. And I know what happens to my American hairdryer when I plug it in to a European socket. The voltage doesn't change and it ends up ruining the appliance if you run it for an extended period of time. And given that I'm going to be there for four weeks, I don't want to damage my hairdryer, flat iron, what name you. So I, I do have the step down voltage converter that's going to serve me well because I'm going to be there for a longer period of time than a week. All right, where is where are the cords, all of this beautiful technology that I just shared get organized? I have this little tech organized from tech organizer from Bellroy. Um, I used to jam all my cords into one sleeve. That was not effective. Now I like to like to keep my cords, my earbuds, my power bank all organized in this Bellroy tech organizer. It's got slots and little bands so that everything stays in its place. All right, so now let's move to what I do and take and have with me while I'm on the flight. I used to be somebody who was a huge fan of a glass of red wine and sleep gummies before a long-haul flight. I've given up the booze in the last while. I'm getting older and every sip just shows up on my face. So now I'm choosing to be very diligent about hydrating instead. I love this collapsible water bottle from a company called No Matter. The advantage is that it packs small, when it's empty, it's leak-proof too. You're going to love it. Uh, airborne. I can't speak highly enough about Airborne. I pound these effers effervescent tablets, vitamin C, before, during, after a flight, because we all know that flights can be a close ecosystem of germs. I remember sitting next to somebody who had a cold. Lo and behold, I came back. I had a cold too. So I take a lot of Airborne to really fortify my immune system. Melatonin. Probably one of the most powerful books I ever read was by an author named Max Lugavera. And the name of his book was Why We Sleep. And he spends a lot of time talking about the different kinds of sleep that we need as human beings. But he also talks about melatonin. Melatonin is the hormone that your body emits when it's signaling to, to, to your body that it's time to wind down. It's time to go to sleep. Now, you'll notice if you look at your phone or you look at any other devices that's got those bright lights, it actually disrupts the production of melatonin in your body because it's signaling your body to wake up. So that's a whole nother conversation about why you should not be looking at devices before you go to sleep. But Lugavera recommends taking three to five milligrams of melatonin. I've got the brand there up on the screen. 30 minutes before you want to go to sleep. Here's an added hack, though. He says, take it in the morning and it tricks your brain into believing that you slept a little bit longer. Eye masks. They're my friend. I live in Brooklyn and my home features beautiful floor to ceiling windows, but it also means that my bedroom looks right out on the federal courthouse, which is lit up like a Christmas tree until midnight. So I would never get to sleep when I go to bed at nine or nine 30. If I didn't have the silk eye mask from Amazon, um, I use it at home. I use it on planes. I also spritz it with lavender oil from a brand called Neom on my pillow or my eye mask to help signal again to my body that it is time to wind down. It's Airports, airplanes, they are alternatively too, too stuffy or they are too drafty. So 
for Turkey this summer, I know I'm going to be visiting some of the most famous mosques in Istanbul. I need to cover my head. I need to cover my shoulders. But guess what? It's also going to be like 100 degrees in Istanbul in August. So I'm bringing this very lightweight linen travel scarf. You can get it on Amazon. And that's going to be great for any time I'm in extreme heat. However, most of the other seasons when it's not 100 degrees, I have a scarf from Paris that I truly love, but a good stand-in that you can get um, online is this white and worn cashmere travel wrap. It comes in like a zillion colors and it's a great piece to pack. So you can be alternatively warm or you can, you know, have it as a blanket, choose your, choose your poison. Uh, compression socks. I'm getting older. I'm giving into some of these vices now, but these compression socks have 70,000 thousand reviews on Amazon. They're popular for keeping your feet and legs from swelling on those long haul flights. It also keeps your, you know, when you're sitting in a cramped seat for a very long time, your blood starts to pool, especially around your feet and your legs. And these compression socks keep that blood circulating throughout your body. And then finally, we all have sat next to that very young baby that's not having a good time on a flight, or we have sat next to a very loud adult talker. One way to relieve any anxiety about either of those individuals is to get these Bose noise-canceling wireless headphones. They're amazing, um, and you would never have any anxiety about getting on a flight, a flight again. All right, let's move to after the flight. Um, I read an article in Travel, Travel and Leisure citing research from WebMD, and a quick hack for shaking off jet lag is to take a cold shower. It not only boosts your circulation, but it's almost like acts as an antidepressant. So a, sh a cold shower, if it's available to you, is one way to hack jet lag when you arrive. But we all know that those flights to Europe arrive in the mornings, and sometimes you are not checking into your hotel until 3 p.m., which is check-in time. So if that is what you're up against, I love these on-the-go shower sheets from Uni Beauty. They're a great alternative. They're created by a couple. Um, both of them are yoga teachers. And heck, you could use these even after a workout. You can just shove them in your bag. But I really, really make sure I keep these on hand if I know that I'm going to have to go to a lunch or go to something right off the flight and I'm not going to have a chance to go back to the hotel, hotel room and shower. Hairbrush. Uh, being a travel junkie, I follow a lot of other people that provide travel tips and organizational tips. Megan Donovan of the blog Wit and Whimsy carries this pocket-sized hairbrush from the British company Mason Pearson. It's going to give you a little bit of sticker shock. I'll not lie when you see this. Mason Pearson is something that my hair salon carries a lot, but it's such a tiny little thing and it's so effective and feels so great on your scalp. I remember when I first moved to New York City, I lived on Second Avenue. And if you don't, if you know anything about New York City, in the dead of night, Second Avenue happens to be the main thoroughfare for every truck that is making a delivery to Manhattan. So it was loud, 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 loud. If quality sleep is important to you, not only when you're home, but also when you're traveling, do what any good therapist does and get yourself a white noise machine. Now, this one from Yoga Sleep is only three and a half inches. It's great to drown out snoring, white noise, trucks, babies, neighboring hotel, whatever. Um, it, it, it's really a great little tool if sleep, again, is such an important part of my leadership and I want to feel confident and I want to feel awake. So the quality of sleep that I get is really key to the kind of trip that I take. Okay. So I have just sort of, sort of rattled off a bunch of stuff here, but let's get metaphysical. One of the things that I'll leave you with is that when I'm on a trip, I always bring a notebook with me because I want to remember how I felt in a moment. I want to go back and reread that. So it's, it's easy to just make a, a really quick list of all the things that you did, but if you can actually sit and capture how you felt in a moment, write yourself a letter that you're going to go back and read much later. I think that that is, journal and pen is one tool that I never leave home without. Hey, I run a business mastermind for women leaders. It runs from 
pretty much January to December, and everybody in that mastermind is building a personal brand, culminating in them delivering a TED Talk on a New York City stage. I don't think there's any faster way for you to build a personal brand than getting up in front of 200 strangers and having to deliver a talk from your zone of genius. So if you would like to join that mastermind in 2024, you can sign up for the wait list. It is down here below.